Hey guys, I'm recording this video before our meetup as I've got a couple things going on afterwards. Uh, but for those of you who couldn't make it out today, hey, sorry we didn't get to see you. Um, but uh, hopefully this video will help you, you know, get caught up with the material. Uh, so today we're going to be covering classes in Python. So whether you know it or not, you've been using classes the whole time. Everything in Python under the hood is a class. Um, and we've seen some of that uh, as we've gone through the Python REPL and kind of looked at, okay, so I have a list. What are all the uh, methods that I can use with the list? Well, I could uh, append an item to it. I can pop an item off of it. You know, things like that, right? Those are all... The list itself is a class that was that basically gets created as an object when, when we use like the list uh, with brackets uh, kind of syntax. Or maybe we went ahead and just used some square brackets, assigned that to something. Well, under the hood, that's taking a class, a list, and basically instantiating it building an instance of an object and you assign that to a variable and while that sounds confusing if you've never heard it before hopefully as we go through this you'll understand it a little bit more so let me go ahead and share my desktop with you if i can find the icon for that and go all right so this is our fourth ish uh session uh and today again we'll be covering classes so if I arrow here, we'll talk about what are classes, uh, what is a class versus an object, uh, some of the keywords that we'll kind of run into, and something we call magic methods. And really, they're nothing more uh, than some methods that if we use Python, knowing that they're there, it can utilize them to do some things. Okay, so two of the keywords we'll cover are class and self. And some of the magic methods that we'll look at are uh, underscore, underscore, init. So in the Python world, we'll hear people refer to that as dunder, double underscore, dunder init, or dunder stir. Okay, and then we'll, we'll have two challenges that we'll work on at the end that will help us uh, to kind of work some of those things in. Okay, so what are classes? Well, classes essentially are blueprints for our objects. So if we think about uh, if somebody wants to make a car and you know they know that a car should uh, essentially have wheels, maybe some type of motor, all these kinds of things, well, they still have to sit down at the very beginning and design it, right? Uh, they have to draw out what is the car going to look like? How is it going to perform? What are the various attributes of the car, right? So classes are just that. They are blueprints for things that we're going to represent uh, in a computer system, right? So the class defines certain attributes. So if I look at it in the context of our car, our attribute might be how many wheels are there? How big are the wheels? Uh, what type of motor? Does it take gasoline or does it take diesel or does it take uh, an electric battery? You know, there's lots of different things that are attributes that we basically store about our vehicle, right? Well, then there are methods that will also build into that blueprint. And those methods might be something like uh, the things that we can do uh, to the car. I can start it. I can drive it. Um, I can turn the radio on. There's different actions that take place, right? So the attributes are values that we're going to store about whatever object we're creating. And then methods are actions that can basically do things to those attributes, right? Now, Python plays pretty loose with their classes. So if you're used to other languages, other languages, you have this uh, consideration of public and private. Uh, so if you've definitely programmed in Java, uh, you have had to write classes from the very beginning. Java makes you do that. Uh, but then as you're defining that, you have to decide, should somebody using my class have access to this attribute or this method? If so, it should be public. Or maybe this is something internal to the object 
uh, that under the hood it does things, but the user who's using it doesn't necessarily need to interact with. In that case, it should be private. Well, in Python, pretty much everything is public, right? So we don't have to worry about that constraint. There are things that we can kind of do uh, to kind of hide things a little bit, but for the most part, it's out in the open. Your code, when it's out there, somebody can do to it, you know, they can use it however they, you know, deem. But essentially, we're going to provide attributes and methods, you know, things we want to store and then things we want to do uh, in our class, and then we'll build our class into an object. Okay, so classes versus objects. So again, the class itself is just a blueprint for something. The object is what we call uh, something that gets instantiated. Basically, it, you take the blueprint and make something from it. And that thing that you make is the object. And that's the thing that we're going to actually interact with in our code. So essentially, we draw the blueprints for what we want to create. And then we create that object and we use that object now in our code. And that should become a little bit more apparent as we actually go and start uh, working with it. So again, objects are the things we actually use and interact with in our program, right? Okay, so keywords that we'll see class. Okay, so just like when we defined our functions, we use the DEF keyword. Well, in this case, we use class. And so Python knows that, hey, the thing that follows is going to be a class, right? But then the structure of it will feel very much, you know, similar to what we've seen with our functions and stuff like that. Okay. We have another keyword self that we'll see quite a bit. Now, self itself it doesn't it's not really a keyword in that in that respect but it's something that most programmers that are programming in python they just name itself okay so self typically refers to the object itself so we're going to see the self keyword used inside of our class but understand that it only really matters when you've now gone from a class to an object and now that object needs to reference something inside of it. So it needs to reference an attribute inside of it or it needs to reference a method inside of it, right? So it says self. So me, I want to access my attribute for the number of wheels that I have. Self, I want to access my attribute for is my radio on, you know, stuff like that, right? So again, it's not a keyword in and of itself, but most programmers name itself. And so that's kind of the scheme that we'll follow, okay? And now we'll talk about these magic methods. So again, there's nothing magic about them other than Python expects them to be there when you do certain things to your objects. So for instance, this dunder in it, this double underscore I N I T. This is how we, this is basically the method that gets called when we try to take a class and produce an object from it, right? So we instantiate an object from it. Yeah, it's a big, you know, word, but essentially this is just you, you taking a class and producing an object from it it calls your dunder init method, okay? Now there's also dunder stir, there's dunder len, there's a lot of other uh, dunder methods that we could put in there, but we'll at least see uh, dunder stir uh, used in at least one of our examples, okay? So again, don't get too caught up on this instantiate thing. It's just, we're gonna take a class, we're gonna produce an object from it, and in order to do that, Python calls our dunder init method, okay? So what does this look like? So we see here we have class robot. So we're defining essentially a class called robot, all right? So again, this is just the blueprint for a robot. And this robot uh, essentially has two methods. So if you see that DEF, 
that's the same syntax we were using when we wrote our own functions, right? And so it performs the same. The difference being though, if I take my pencil out right here, the difference being is this first value that comes in, self, refers to the object calling this method, right? So as I'm creating a robot, it's going to call this dunder init method and it's going to pass in an instance of itself here. And so this again refers back to the uh, object calling this method, right? So self, and then I'm also passing in something I'm naming name, right? And so in order to assign my name to my robot, I say self again. So referring to the object that's calling this thing, its name is going to equal the name that was passed in, right? So this gets assigned here, right? So I'm creating my object, my robot, the object that calls it, then gets its name assigned to the name I give it. And we'll see, uh, you know, we'll see this kind of play out here in a second. But essentially, the first thing that comes in is the a reference to that object calling it. And we just name itself because that's what most Python programmers do. And so self.name is referring to the name of that object. We also have another method uh, called say hello. And so it gets a reference to itself. Again, this is normal behavior for a, for a class or for an object, right? So when the object is calling its say hello method. It passes in an instance of itself. And then all we're doing here is printing out, hey, you know, you know, so-and-so says beep boop, right? Um, and so notice here, in order to pull its name up to here, we have self.name, right? So the same kind of syntax we use here. So anytime you want to reference something for that, for the object itself, you have to say self and then dot and what you want to access, right? So name. So this is an attribute of the object. This is a method of the object, right? So methods I call and then attributes I can assign to them, right? So again, the robot is the name of the class. This dunder init gets called when we're creating the object based off of this class. We use self uh, as the first thing that comes in to any method. And self just refers back to the object that's calling that method. Okay. So let me turn that off and move. Okay. So again, the self.name is the attribute. Self refers back to the uh, object instance. And then in order for us basically to call it, Right, so this is us creating, oops. This is us creating right here, our object. So the class is named robot. And we treat robot almost like a function right here, right? So robot, and we pass in Tin Man. What this is actually doing under the hood is calling this init method. So this, calls the init method. This tin man gets passed in as name. And so that name then gets assigned to the object. And so the result of all of this is an object that we're now naming my robot one. But then we can go and do the same exact thing and do my robot two. And so these are both objects of class robot, but they, for all, uh, for all purposes, they're completely separate objects, right? 
So this object's name is Tin Man, and this object's name is Robbie. And so when I call the say hello method for my robot one, it prints out Tin Man says beep boop. And when I call my robot two dot say hello, I get Robbie says beep boop. So again, they're completely different objects. They just happen to both be of class robot, right? So they're all based off of that original blueprint, but they have their own attributes. And so when you call them, they both have different names because we assigned different names to them. We gave one Tin Man and one Robbie. So I hope you can start to see that although um, they were based off of the same uh, blueprint, they have their own address spaces, their own places to save attributes and interact with them. So although I can interact with them in the same way, because they're completely separate, I can, I can imagine maybe I'm writing a game and I have multiple characters in the game and, and each character, although it's based off of the same blueprint character, has different attributes. They have different inventories. They have different uh, hit points. They have different, um, uh, you know, all sorts of different things. But the thing is, is they can all run. They can all maybe jump. They can all do battle, you know, stuff like that. So they have these common uh, methods because they're all based off of the same class, but because they're different objects, they have different values that, that are assigned to them, right? Okay, we'll move forward. All right, so we have gone through the bulk of just kind of explaining what is a class, you know, this and that. This will help us organize our code a little bit. Uh, it helps us keep track of values because those values get assigned to the object. And so as long as I'm interacting with that object, I don't have to remember, oh wait, I saved uh, this attribute over there. I saved this piece of data over there and I named this piece of data there. As long as I base them all off the same class, I know what the attributes are called. I know what the methods are all called. Um, and so I can interact with them, you know, very easily. And it worries about handling, you know, the saving of attributes and the manipulation of, the, of those values and stuff like that. Okay. So challenge one, we're going to go ahead and use a class. So we just saw an example of a robot. Um, so let me slide down. Uh, and I've got, uh, I've got some of the code up here. Uh, and we'll just kind of jump into it. Now, just as a note, let me look at the time. So make sure, okay, we got plenty of time. Okay, so just as a note, if you don't have Python installed locally, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if I slide up, I've got REPL IT, uh, dot, uh, or actually it's called REPLIT.com now. Um, but essentially, you can sign up for a free account there uh, and you can basically create a new Python REPL. You can name it whatever you want, create the REPL, and then you have now a place to work on your Python code. So in this case, they have a main.py already. I can go ahead and delete that. Uh, I can uh, add a file. I don't want to do that. Sorry. I want to uh, upload a file. And then I could basically browse to wherever I've saved that uh, to. And I'm good to go, right? And then I can interact with it and run it right here. For me, I'm just going to use... Uh, this is VS Code. I'm going to use this on my desktop. Okay. So I have a class here called Character. And notice here, again, I start it with the class keyword. I have a colon here. I have some indentation here. So this is the exact same kind of thing that we did um, with our loops. You know, with a for loop, we ended it with the colon and then we indented everything underneath of it. It's the same kind of format that we did with our functions where we basically defined our function. We ended that line with a colon and then we indented everything underneath of it that was a part of that function, right? Same thing for classes. We just start it with the class keyword. Uh, we give it a name. Typically in Python, we'll give it an uppercase character, but it really doesn't care, okay? And then we had doc strings 
in our functions that we defined before, I can have doc strings in my classes, right? So that when people need to interact with my class, they can look up in some of the help documentation uh, to figure out how to use it. So again, good things to kind of put in there uh, and you can put whatever you want just to explain how to use uh, your uh, class. So in my case, I listed just its attributes and the methods uh, that were defined. Okay, now I could have put doc strings in here for each of the different methods. Pretty good thing to do as well, uh, but to keep this a little bit shorter, I decided not to. Okay, so our dunder init method. So this is the method that will be called when I create an object based off of this class or I instantiate this object, right? So the first thing coming in is self and the next thing coming in is going to be a name. And so I'm going to name the object because I've got self.name. I'm going to sign the name and then I've got self.inventory. I'm just using the uh, square brackets. So I'm basically building a list. So I have an inventory that my character is going to have, right? So I'm building a character class and it will have an inventory and that inventory will be a list. And there are two fun or two methods that I can perform uh, with my class. One is pick up and one is drop, right? So this is my character picking up an item. Maybe it just did battle. And so it picks up an item off of the ground, right? So it's going to take that item and it's going to do a self because we're referring back to the object self dot inventory append right and so i'm going to append that item to my list and so i can pick up pick up pick up and it'll just keep appending those uh, items to my list my inventory list right and then drop i have to first check to see is there anything currently in my inventory to drop right and so I just do this quick little uh, if check. So if self.inventory, uh, if the inventory is empty, right? So if it's an empty list, this ends up evaluating as false. And so it would come down here and I would return none, meaning I had nothing to drop. Otherwise, uh, if it evaluates as true, I go ahead and pop the last item off of my inventory. Now I could have randomly chose or I could have had the user define an item and I would have checked my inventory and, and decided, okay, is that item there? If so, I'll drop it. But just to keep it simple, all we're doing is we're doing a self.inventory.pop, okay? So this is a very short class. Again, uh, I just need to be able to store my character's name and I need to build an inventory for them so that they can pick up and drop items, okay? So how am I going to use that? So the first portion is, is first we have to create our character. If I could spell, how about character? No, nope. there we go. So create a character and give it a name. So this is essentially, this is where I'm instantiating or creating my object, right? So let's say I will call this my hero. And then what is my class called? Well, my class was called character. So let's say character. And what is the uh, dunder init function expecting? Well, all, it always gets itself the, the objects instance first, but then it's expecting something as a name. So let's go ahead and just give it a string and we'll call this, uh, my character's name is Josh. Okay, too easy. So now I have a hero and his name is Josh and he has an inventory of nothing, right? It should be an empty list. And so if I go ahead and save that and let's see, where am I at here? So I can go into 08. Let me drag this up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to Python 3 tack I to make it interactive. And I'll just do main.py. All right. So at this point, Python has run all of these lines, right? So it, it created the class. So if I do a dir, I will see that there is a character. And if I look at that, 
Uh, it is a class type. Okay, but I also have this hero down here. And so my hero, hero is of class main character. Let me make sure, yep, that is shown up on the screen. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, so if I do a dir on hero now, I can see that my hero has all of these things already defined. And so notice here we have our drop method, we have our pickup method, we have our inventory and our name. So if I wanted to print hero dot name, not hame, name, I'll get Josh. And if I do a print on my hero inventory, oops, if I could spell it right, inventory, I have an empty list. Okay, so so far the dunder init method did exactly what we thought it was going to do. By calling this just like we did, Josh got assigned to the name and then inventory started with just an empty list because all it did was call this, this little bit of code right there, right? So the dunder init method. Okay, so at this point we have our hero. Our hero has the attribute we want. And so now we want to print our character's name. So too easy, print. Uh, hero dot name. Okay, so that's too easy. Have your character pick up an item or two. So we'll uh, do hero dot pick up, and let's give our hero an axe, and then uh, we can have a hero dot pick up a shovel. All right. So it feels very Minecrafty. All right. So have your character drop an item and print it out. So I'm gonna cheat here and I'm just gonna call the print method or print function. And I'm gonna put my hero right here inside of it and I'll do a drop and we'll just do it like that, right? Oop, not draw, how about drop? Okay, so our hero has picked up an ax and a shovel and then we're printing out hero.drop. So drop should return the last item that was on the list. So we should expect that the last item on the list was our shovel. So we're dropping our shovel and that essentially gets now passed to our print method. Now we could have done this by doing something like this. Item equals hero dot drop and then print item, right? So that breaks it into two steps, but essentially it does the same thing, right? So we drop an item that gets assigned to item, and now we print that item out. So if I exit out, I'll go ahead and save that. I think I can just hit run, and yes, it does run. Cool. So we printed out the name of our hero, and then we printed out the item that was dropped, okay? So that's, that's as easy as it gets right there. We defined a class. We built the blueprint for a character. We defined some attributes that we care about. And then we uh, built some uh, methods in order to interact with some of those attributes. Now, nothing stopped me from interacting with those attributes directly like this. Um, but I can use these methods because that maybe makes it easier. There's maybe some checking that has to happen in the background, right? Um, and so by calling the method, you know, it, it might be a little bit better, uh, you know, for my object, right? So that was the blueprint for my character. By, do, by calling it in, in this way, I'm instantiating or creating an object based on that class and I assigned it to a variable called hero. And now I can just interact with hero uh, given all of the attributes and method that are a part of that class, okay? So hopefully that was you know, a little easy to kind of walk through. They, it's, the, the wheels are starting to turn. 
So we'll jump in. And I think the next portion was just, hey, now let's uh, go ahead and try our own class, right? So in this uh, instance, we def you, you were given a class. And so you just basically had to create an object based off of that class and then interact with it. In nine, however, we're going to turn it up a notch and we are going to I give you kind of the structure of the class, but you're going to have to basically fill it out, right? So it shouldn't be much more difficult, just a little bit more thought process here, right? So we have a class called car and there's the dunder init method. Let me slide this down, give us a little bit more real estate. All right, so there's the dunder init method when the object is created. There's a start method, a stop method. So this is us starting and stopping our car. There's a drive method. And then there's this dunder stir so that we can basically print out the our object. And what will get printed is the string that we return. So I've filled this one out for you. Um, but essentially, uh, anytime you print an object that is of class car, it's just going to return this string to you. So you can kind of gauge the mileage for that car. All right. So let's see. So let's start here at the top and we'll start uh, building out these methods. So create attributes to keep track of mileage and whether the car is running. So set mileage initially to zero and set running initially to false. Okay, so we have self coming in, but nothing else. So let's get rid of this pass. This essentially says do nothing, right? And I think I gotta hit my insert, there we go. All right, so let's do self dot mileage equals zero. And we'll do self dot running equals false. All right, so that was pretty easy. Okay, now we have to define our start method. So our start method uh, only accepts itself, the object that's calling it. And it says, uh, set the running state to true. Okay, sounds easy. Self dot running equals true. Okay, cool, cool. All right, define a stop. So set the running state to false. So this is us shutting off our vehicles self dot running equals false okay so we're not checking necessarily if the car's already running or it stopped we're just going to set it right so let's see now we have drive if running state is true add miles traveled to mileage and return true so let's see so we're taking in the object itself and then the number of miles traveled. Okay, so if, and so we have to first check to see if the, the current vehicle is running. So self dot running. So that should evaluate to true or false. So we could have done this, uh, but essentially true is already assigned to that thing. So there's no point in checking to see whether it's true. Um, so if, and this will value it as true or false. So if it's true, all right. So if that thing is true, then we'll do self dot mileage plus equals, and we'll call this miles underscore traveled. Okay. So if the vehicle's running, we can obviously drive it. So we'll drive it for that amount of mileage and we'll return true. Now, what happens if the vehicle was not running? So I could do else, there's nothing for me to add, return false. So I could do that, right? There's nothing stopping me from doing that. However, this else is kind of pointless because if it's true, we're going to return right from here, which means anything that's below it doesn't get executed. And the only time the things that do get executed that are below it is if this is false, right? 
So there's almost no point in having it else because we can just do that, right? So if this is true, we're gonna evaluate this and we'll return out of, out of our method right from there. Otherwise, it's gonna start down here and it's gonna automatically return false. So I'm gonna return true if I was able to drive my vehicle, I'll return false if I couldn't drive my vehicle because it wasn't started. Okay, now our, our class is filled out. So it's complete uh, according to, you know, what the directions, you know, wanted us to do. So let's come down here. So first create two car objects. So I'll say, this is going to be car one equals car. And I don't believe car took anything. So we don't even get a name our car, but that's all right. We'll do car two equals car. So we have two car objects at this point, right? So we called the class here, it instantiated or created our object and we assigned that to car one and we assigned another one to car two. So both of them are of class car, but they're two completely separate objects. Okay, so start the first car. So car one dot start. Okay. Try to drive the first car and test to see if you were successful. So if I was successful, I should get a return of true. If I wasn't successful, I'll return false. So I'll just do something like this. If car one dot drive, and we'll say we're going to drive 500 miles, print, and we'll just say car one, right? So this is essentially going to call this method, right? So Python knows, hey, if you're gonna to try to print me this way, I'm gonna to look to see if certain methods have been defined. One of those methods is this dunder stir. So what happens is this string gets built and it gets returned to the print function and we'll see that our mileage does get printed out. Else, and we'll just print, you could not drive your car. Uh, we'll just put, you could not drive car one. We'll call it that way so we know which one you weren't able to drive. Now try to drive the second car. So let's go ahead and just copy this. I'll paste it right there. Except paste doesn't want to work. I think I had this problem last week. You hit the escape a bunch of times. Escape. Maybe it's because I have my... Nope, I've exited drawing mode, so I don't know what's going on. We'll just type it out. If car two dot drive, we'll try to go a thousand miles in this one. Print car two, else, how come you couldn't figure out? It should have been there. All right, print, uh, you could not drive car two. Now let's go ahead and stop our first car. So car one dot stop and save that. And we'll run it and let's see what happens. All right, so car mileage is 500. So this looks very much like this. So because we started car one, and this evaluated is true. We we're able to print it out. And then here you could not drive car two because we had not started car two and they're completely separate objects. So it doesn't matter that we started car one, car two is not started. And so we could not drive it. And so we printed out, you could not drive car two. We stop our car one and exit our program. Okay, so that one wasn't very difficult. What I wanted you to see is that again, um, although they're both of the same class, they're two totally separate objects. They have their own memory space, which means the running state of car one has nothing to do with the running state of car two. So when we call the car one 
start or the car one stop doesn't affect car two. When we drive car one, doesn't affect car two, right? Okay. So again, we defined our class. So with the class uh, keyword here, this is now a blueprint for any car we want to stamp out. And then we call it right there, which instantiates the class into an object, which you know creates that object. And we just assign it to a new variable, right? And then we interact with that variable using the attributes and methods that were defined in the class, right? So not, not too bad. So I'm gonna call it there. Um, that's classes for you. That's essentially what you're interacting with all the time in Python, whether you know it or not, okay? So thanks again for, for uh, stopping out. Uh, hopefully, uh, we're about to kick off here in about 20 minutes, actually. Uh, but like I said, I have, I have some stuff to do afterwards and uh, wanted to make sure I was able to kind of push this out for you guys. So again, thanks for watching. Take it easy.